I made an RC car with DRS, Drag Reduction System, just like in Formula One. And today we're gonna see if something this small can even work at all. I'll also walk you through how I built it, as well as how to turn this thing into scrap in one easy step. And for anyone not already aware, F1 cars have active rear wings that can open a rear flap to shed drag so that they can hit higher top speeds on the back of a straightaway. And this helps them pass cars that maybe they couldn't have passed previously. We'll cover all the science for this here in a little bit, but let's keep going on with the car build. The car I built uses a triple element rear wing for a lot more downforce, unlike the dual elements you see in Formula One, but the overall concepts are the same. And I can activate this DRS by pressing pressing a small button on my remote, opening the second and third elements, and hopefully shedding a bunch of drag. What you see here is the high downforce position, and opening the elements is obviously the low downforce, low drag position. And this mechanism overall is set up to fail in the high downforce condition, so I get maximum control if something breaks, or at least theoretically it is. And that's because the center of pressure of each of the elements is ahead of the center of pivot, so it should kind of push it back down into the the high downforce condition. Let's go give it a few shakedown laps to see if things work as I hoped. This is technically a four bar mechanism where the end plates serve as the ground link and they have the pivot point for the wing elements themselves. And the bracket that actually attaches the wings is a second element. This is the pivoting element that gives me the DRS. Then you have a metal rod that goes from the wings themselves down to our fourth and final link which is our servo horn. And you can see on the servo horn, I've got these bars at two different positions, approximately 2x the distance for the third element. And that's because by changing the position on the servo horn, I can get more rotation. And I need this because my second element is at a lower angle of attack than my third element. But whenever I open the DRS, I want them to both be level. Now let's go run some more tests. At these lower speeds, the car actually feels really good and it handles well, but the DRS did start sticking. And that's because these SLA prints did what SLA prints do and they started warping and it kind of caught the back end of the third element. But it's as easy as kind of sanding some corners down and I think we're ready to get back out there because everything actuates just fine. So let's hit the road again. In this test, I'm seeing something I really didn't want to see, and that's that the arrow is really unbalanced. It's actually so unbalanced that the rear end squats enough to put this massive front splitter and under tray at a positive angle of attack. I had put this big front splitter on here to try and balance the front and rear arrow, but it looks like I didn't succeed. But don't worry, it gets much worse than that. I've essentially created the Mercedes CLR that is a self-flipping car. And because I'm impatient, instead of stiffening the rear springs and just dealing with the aero imbalance, I kept running. And after a few flips, I mean, everything was still working fine. I was pretty surprised at how sturdy it was as long as it landed okay. And occasionally, I can get it to land on its own wheels and just keep with the run going instead of having to flip it myself. And when I tested with the DRS open at higher speeds, we could see that the system actually worked beautifully. And I know this because it didn't squat anymore. The car stayed pretty level and I didn't get this obnoxious flipping symptom. So at least our DRS does what DRS is supposed to do. 
But seriously, there's way too much rear downforce. With the DRS closed, the rear under tray actually can scrape the ground at higher speeds as long as it doesn't flip over first. I need to celebrate the small victories here because it's not all roses. Eventually, I sent this car into a cartwheel, which is probably the absolute worst type of crash that could have happened, and I demolished the rear wing completely. On a positive note, these forged carbon fiber wing elements held together perfectly well. But the aluminum under tray did not make it. You can see this thing is mangled. Luckily, I could kind of drive it back so I didn't have to take multiple trips, but testing was done. We need a full rebuild. Now let's discuss some of the science behind DRS and why F1 cars need it. And we'll do this by looking at my design. This wing profile has a drag coefficient of 0.28 in the closed position. But when I open it, that drag coefficient drops down to 0.07. That's one fourth as much drag. And this translates to more top speed when the wing is open. With it closed, my theoretical top speed is about 127 miles per hour, whereas open, it's about 134 miles an hour. Which may seem like a small gain, but seven miles per hour faster than your competition down the back straight can actually be a huge deal when it comes to passing. Now these are all just theoretical top speeds that I've based on the motor power as compared to the power to overcome aerodynamic drag. This motor configuration gives me about 4,800 watts. So I basically compared this 4,800 watts against the power to overcome aerodynamic drag for the two different configurations, and that's how we get an approximate top speed. Now there's a lot of other factors that come into play here, so this is not an exact value, but it's a good baseline for understanding how important these aerodynamics really are. And here's the formulas if you wanna play with a little bit of the math yourself to see just how power consuming poor aero is. And this extra speed is even more critical for F1 cars when they're trying to follow each other because they rely on a lot of front end downforce and that front end downforce goes away when they get close to the car in front of them. So they either have to destroy their tires, risk losing control, or they need an equalizer that allows them to get past a car that they may actually be faster than. And so this DRS allows them to claw back some of this lost performance when they follow another car. And if you're as impressed as I am by these seemingly indestructible forged carbon fiber wing elements, I actually did a video on how I made these. It's a lot more simple than you think, and these things have consistently performed above my expectations. Check it out if you haven't already.